What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. And for once, I didn't screw up our own tagline as I did in our live presentation yesterday. Um, we are just uh, just coming off the team building summit. Uh, last day of the event was yesterday. We'll get into a little bit of the uh, lessons that we personally learned from that event and some of the conversations that took place uh, in and around the event. Uh, not so much what was going on just at the sessions, but the overall experience and the conversations that were taking place uh, in the hallways and in the highways and byways outside the uh, airport. As you can hear, Greg is at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> the junior grandmaster himself. You're not in your box yet. Get back in your box, Greg. You have a, you have a thousand miles to uh, traverse, and then you're back in the box where you so belong. Oh man, don't you tell me what to do. I will do what I please, sir. Uh -huh. I went to Gary V today. I'm going to walk through the airport because I was sitting in a nice quiet area a second ago, and then all of a sudden it turned into a megaphone for now boarding flight, blah, 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 going to yak and yeah. smack. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> dang it. Um, but dude, yeah, dude, the event was so much fun. You know, Jeff put on a phenomenal group, you know, group of speakers, and just it, it was so much fun. We got to meet Trey for the first time in person. We got to meet Jeff, I mean, meet Jeff for the first time in person. You know, there were just so many good, good, awesome people that were there that we got to hang out with. Just an what an honor, bro. And not to mention the fact that we talked to three very well-established individuals that want to join our, our EXP team that came up to us talking about how they wanted to join us. And that's just, so it's going to speak to the power of the platform and how when you get a platform and you treat it right and you're honest, authentic, real, and people gravitate towards who you really are, how you can open up doors you've never thought could be opened up and how you can collaborate with legends you know, and we all get together and have a lot of fun and change lives. So it's just, it's, I don't know, dude, it's just a great time. I mean, it's just, yeah. what a cool thing. Yeah, I agree. It was a really great time. We'll, we'll, we'll get into some of the specific lessons uh, and observations and cool conversations that, uh, that we took part in uh, in that event <clears throat> in a second and later in the show and stuff like that. I want to start off with a question real quick. But yeah, it was, it was definitely an amazing experience. I'm here visiting family. Uh, as we speak, as we're recording, it's May of 2018. Um, and so if you're listening or watching this after the fact, make sure that you go to the teambuildingsummit.com and check in on future dates, because I know Jeff will be doing that again in the coming years. Uh, because yeah, it was, it was a great time. It was a very specialized event where for the most part, everyone in attendance there either already had a high, like a really successful team or was on their way to being in that position. Right. So I mean, yeah. the, the lowest, I would say the lowest caliber of the people there, and I don't want to disparage them by calling that. I just mean um, by, by comparison to some of the guys like Greg Harrelson and Jeff Cohn that are selling hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of homes a year. Um, the people, you know, towards the, the entry level of that event even were, you know, uh, extremely successful team leaders. And so it's a very niche event, uh, which is really cool because that what, what that allows you to do is get deeper and more specific on the content in the event. So it doesn't have to be so generalized and it doesn't have to appeal to the lowest common denominator agent who's doing five deals, 10 deals a year. Uh, we can get more specific, uh, which is awesome. So that was part of what I enjoyed because I, I love those conversations about leadership and team building and the real granular stuff about marketing and lead generation and all that stuff. And that's part of why the event was so fun. Well, also, the funny thing is that you and Greg Harrelson got into a uh, very lively debate uh, the first night there when we were at a, a VIP kind of mixer drinks and snacks and hanging out with people. There was a crowd around you too. You guys are going deep on stuff. And I, I'm like, dude, I wish I could have been a part of that. And you're like, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't have, Greg. I'm like, what are you trying to keep me out of the fun, Johnson? Gosh. <laughs> that was, that was fun. Uh, it was fun, Johnson. Um, funny, at one point, Harrelson, Harrelson comes back from getting himself a drink and drops two, uh, two maker's marks in front of me. I'm like, I'm not drinking, but come on now. <laughs> it's like what? Well, they poured you an extra one. I'm like, hey, yeah, come on now. <laughs> oh man, like, I'm not yeah. falling for that. Uh, and then <laughs> and then Jeff Cohn sent me over a vodka. Well, like everybody wanted to see, like you know, the, so, everyone wanted to get me drunk or something. I don't know. So the funny thing about Jeff's drink that he brought over to you, he toddled over to mm -hmm. to me and the crew I was in. He's like, so whose is this? And all of us are like, it's not ours. And I'm like, is there alcohol in it? He's like, yeah. I'm like, go give it to Matt and tell him it's just water. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i couldn't do it i came back and i told him <laughs> <It was like> <laughs> <laughs> that's right 
Well, All right, well, let's, uh, before, before we wax uh, too, long, too long about just the event itself, we'll get back into more, uh, more specifics. But I wanted to cover a couple of questions that caught my eye. So, uh, sure. so first of all, uh, Paul Franklin had a really interesting question. Uh, this is a question I've never seen before in any form. You ready, Greg? Uh, what's your favorite color? Do you uh, want Smurfs yeah. as an adult? As, yeah, exactly. as an adult. What's your favorite shade of magenta? No. Uh, so Paul <laughs> Franklin says, what, what physical systems are people using to manage and track clients outside of their CRM? Uh, whiteboards, index cards, etc. He says, I know we live in our CRM, but I'm a very tactile person. I still buy books, records, and CDs because I want to hold things in my hands, turn a page rather than swipe a screen, and I don't feel my CRM the way I do a working wall. Uh, the CRM might be the heart and soul of my business, but I need a better visual stimulation. So right now, he says, I'm currently transcribing active clients and hot leads onto index cards with key data on the back of the cards, better uh, visualize kind of the doing, uh, do, doing, and done activities. So what, what tactile system has worked for you? Greg, I know you guys have had um, the whiteboard, you know, in the office for years. Um, so I don't know if Eileen maybe still does that at home. Eileen's probably pretty good at tracking things in her head. Um, but for you, I know for you and Terry and Chris, you guys had the, the whiteboard that had all of your active clients. How did that work for you guys? And how did you? Well, I mean, for us, I mean, what the, you know, having the whiteboard is, was a big thing. Cause you look up there and get a phone number, client's name, you know, co contact information. You could, you could also visually track your success and how you're doing. And it, it's a, it's a, it's a nice little kind of, you know, reach around for lack of a better term when you're doing really well, but also a straight kick in the ass when you're not, you know, crushing as many as you want to, because you don't, we'd put a black P up on the board in the box for a pending. So if there wasn't mm -hmm. that many P's on the board, you're like, oh shit, this is, we've got to go, blah, 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 you know? And so that, for me, that really worked out really well. And I think that a whiteboard is something that I might be putting into my house, but I just don't want to put any holes on my walls. I, mean, I have really expensive paint on my walls, like no joke. And I really just don't want to be pounding holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, I keep files at my house. I mean, it's something I can flip through, buyer sheets, seller sheets. Um, so I get what Paul's talking about, but I mean, Paul, I love you, Bubba. But at the exact same time, you got to graduate into where the digital realm is because the the the, 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 the tactical or, or tactile DRM or follow up things, you could do three or five cards, but you should just do your phone, man. I mean, that's a, something you can touch. Yeah, it's a swipe, but I think you've got to graduate. The more I travel, the more I look. Do people look down more than they look up? I'm watching two guys right now, and all they do is just look down and look at their phones. Everybody looks at their phones. Everybody uses yeah. a phone. So I yeah. use the phone. But Matt, I mean, you're way better with systems than I am, man. I mean, in follow up and you know that kind of a thing. What would you yeah, but I'm, but I'm old enough to be I'm old enough to be a lot like Paul, uh, in the sense that I I'm I'm the same way. Like I want I want things to handle uh, tactile. Like for goals, for example, I, I got, I've got, you know, I've got my, like my life dream yeah. on my phone in a document that, that lives on, like it lives on an app uh, called Workflowy, uh, which means that I, any phone I pick up, I could just log, log into Workflowy, any computer I could log into it. And, and like my, the latest, most up-to-date version of my life dream that I go over every single morning and multiple times throughout the day is there, right? So that's hmm. very digital. But for my 90-day goals, I actually have them on Post-it notes on the wall right by my door, and they're put in such a way that the, the I can see them no matter if the door is open or not. Right. So, so I see them all the time. Like I literally have to pass them multiple times a day, uh, and that's that's a that's a tactile thing. Like I want to see those. I want to see them written in freaking black sharpie. Um, mm. And then for one of the reasons I love Trello so much is because yeah, you can't touch it but trello is like a just about as tactile as you can get in the digital mm. world right because you can put pictures on your on, on your screens on your boards is what they call them so it's it's very much like having a digital whiteboard with post-it notes that's the way i think of trello i think that's kind of how it originally developed because it was project management software for um software engineering and that's how you that's how you kind of map out what a software does is you write a bunch of post-it notes down on what you want the features to be and you start putting them into a whiteboard into flow workflows and yada yada so that's where trello came from so when you can when you can get really specific about you know the way that you set up your trello boards and then you assign pictures to each of those little post-it note type cards you can open up that card and it's got all the information you want so it's got all the benefits of digital but then it's got 
the tactile part of like that's an actual picture. It's something I can move around. I see it's very visual. Um, and so, like in Paul's case, like what we do with our with our active clients and with our uh, guest booking relationships, like all, all the relationships that I want to kind of see, I put them in Trello. Interesting. <laughs> that way I get I get it's the kind of the intersection. And honestly, what I would love to do. Um, I would love to get like a Google Jamboard or or a very large uh, like a touch screen. Google mm -hmm. Jamboard is still five grand at this point, so it's not it is like the value is not there just for what I want to do with it. Uh, some some people have like dashboards, like Jeff Cohn has a dashboard flat screen in his office that shows all of his current stats. What I would rather have is I want to have a touch screen of my Trello board. Ooh, that would be cool. That is like the ultimate, that's cool. you know what I'm saying? That's the ultimate combination of tactile and digital because then you can like touch screen, you can do this, you can move it around, you can you know do all the stuff. I mean, literally we're about to step into like the days of minority report, which is going to be awesome. I was just going to say that. Uh -huh. I'm like, is yeah. Tom Cruise starring in your life? <laughs> yes, he will, please. That's that. Yeah, let's get it right. Tom Cruise stars in my life, not the other way around. Thank you yeah. very much. You are yeah. welcome. You um, deserve it. Exactly. So that's uh, <laughs> so those are some good those are some good suggestions. Um, uh, for uh, I do like the index card thing, but uh, post-it notes that you can stick up and put on the wall or erasable whiteboards. There's also um, uh, there are now chalkboard paint, whiteboard yeah. paint. Yep. Somebody was telling me. Um, so John Berghoff, uh, who's a former Cutco guy, good friends with Hal Elrod and all that crowd. Uh, Berghoff did some consulting with BMW in Germany. Said when we walked into to BMW, um, I don't know if it's all their hallways or, or a couple of specific hallways. It might be all of them. They're painted with whiteboard paint. Yeah, I've seen so that. So literally anytime you want, you can grab a, a marker and, blah, 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 and you can write directly on the wall, uh, which is a you really know, cool idea. One of the things I saw over at RPM, a mortgage company in our area, is the fact that like they have uh, glass windows and glass walls, but they're all writable. So they have the markers that you can just write on your walls if you want to use that as your visual thing. So, I mean, for me, I'm immediately starting to think, I'm like, huh, I have a window right in front of my face every day, all day. You know, and I want to see um, what kind of markers I can get so I can have my clients' names. I can have something up there do then, or just, or just get the, um, or just get the, the three by five cards and write my goals down, write my clients' information down, write with status on them. Just make it ugly and messy very much like the you know, mm -hmm. blue fishing, but make it something mm -hmm. that works for you. So I don't think you have to make, you don't have to make it a third party. You just have to make it functional for you and mm. what your work style is. And so yeah. for me, I, I mean, the reason why I don't want to put a whiteboard up in my office is because I don't want to punch holes in my wall. Um, but I do have a window mm. that I want to put shit up on because I get fucking sunburned on that damn thing every day. So it might be an opportunity. I, I, either that or I was going to put a Lagunitas uh, uh, flag right there. So maybe a little less alcoholic and a little bit more productive or a little more productive, you know, it might be a good, mm -hmm. a good idea for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, this is what I would, this is what I would love to happen, Greg. Oh, I would love, I would love for, for you to write IP, the word IPA on your window and like, in like whiteboard ink or whatever, and then just yeah. stand in front of it, like taking a phone call and not realize that the sun <laughs> is like imprinting the outline of the IPA, like on your forehead. <laughs> You're a fucking sadist. <laughs> you call yourself right. a friend. I right. do. All right. This is a, a semi-related question because I think uh, part of, part of the techniques that we talked about that might help Paul might help in this situation. Uh -huh. So Jonathan Melton uh, says, does anyone have a really great spreadsheet for comparing multiple offers? Um, and I think it gets to the heart of the same kind of problem that Paul is having, which is that I think sellers, um, th this is not what they do every day. So I think it really helps to have something if you do have multiple offers, five, ten offers or whatever, in terms of how to compare them and how to present them in such a way that they can understand intelligently what you're recommending. Um, Greg, I don't know if you've ever, if Eileen has put stuff into a spreadsheet for you uh, and how you guys handle multiple, multiple offers. Yeah, we do actually. We have a spreadsheet that does, you know, identify and lay out the differences in each one of the offers. But my mind immediately started going, you, you must have paid a hundred bucks to someone to really create an epic uh, spreadsheet and but it could mm -hmm. I mean you could you could put the different uh, parts in there so you know what, what the different um, threat levels are so if one person has more down less down one's FHA one's conventional you know one has different days on contingencies they all formulate to a percentage of a threat of being able to close and not close so that then you could show it to a client okay. very easily you know green is good red is bad um, with the different prices mm -hmm. highlighted and 
the different areas. Like if they have a 21 day contingency and the other guy's got a 14 day, you know, you, you know, it goes green on the 14. I don't know. I think that could be a really bitch in product. We should start, we should make that. Yeah. No joke. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely an option. Um, uh, very cool. I like that. Okay. All right. So there was one other, see, there's one other one that kept me, uh, that, that, or that caught my eye, I should say. This is from Marlene. This is on the LGSO group. Uh, and if guys, if you're not a member, go to, um, Facebook, go search for lead gen scripts and, uh, scripts and objections run by a good friend of the show, Aaron Wittenstein, uh, mm -hmm. and really, really great community of people to lean on to help you with your sales and prospecting, especially scripts and objections. So, yeah. and this is a general, it starts off with a general door knocking question, but it's the last part that caught my eye, Greg. So, so she said, those that door knock, what kind of approach do you like? Any idea of how to keep people talking? That's the part that I think people struggle with uh, if they're sure. not, not as confident in their conversational skills is mm -hmm. just when the conversation seems to drop or it gets awkward or, or how can I prevent it from getting awkward by, can, by smoothly continuing the conversation? Okay, a couple things you can do. One, they can work the Ford script, the family, occupation, recreation, and start asking more about you know, that person, their family, you know, all those different things. And guys, mm -hmm. you, can, you can Google Ford, you can take a look at it. So it just stands for down the left side of a piece of paper, write F-O-R-D, and it stands for family. Occupation, recreation, and dreams. I've demonstrated this several times on the show. We can just go ask questions about people's families, what they do for a living, occupation, what they do to have fun, recreation, and then what their dreams are. Do they want to stay in the area? Do they not? You know, whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. So you can do that. Another way that you can get people to keep people talking. Two other options is the fact that when you are approaching the property, you can find something that catches your eye. Something you're like, oh, that's really cool. So it could be the pavers, it could be the, the car in the driveway, it could be, um, it could be the window coverings, it could be anything. I mean, it could be anything that you like and genuinely think is interesting. You can then point out to them and say, wow, that's really a cool yada 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 be smack, right? Mm -hmm. And then I did this to a lady um, many moons ago at this point, Johnson, and it was I, you no, know, it was about four years ago because I'd moved into my condo. <laughs> you're mm -hmm. smiling like you're like moons many moons many moons that's my channeling my native american uh, heritage if you had didn't know um <laughs> uh but what it is is that i, I what? sorry uh, my well my mind immediately goes to okay how many hilarious <laughs> but super racist last names can i come up with correct <laughs> I was just gonna say what you didn't know my Indian name was uh, so many homes McDaniel. Yeah, no, no, no. I was thinking more like so many homes. Oh, great! Oh, great! Greg gives no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we digress. We can we can insult our American Indian native brothers in another time, but we love them all. Um, That's right. All in jest. But uh, so what I would do is I went up to this house and uh, this lady. I talked to her. She was pretty standoffish when I first got when I first started talking to her. Uh, then I noticed there were a lot of succulent plants on her front porch. Now, when, it, when I mean a lot, I mean like there was just a walking path for humans. The plants owned the rest of the patio. And I just moved in. I didn't have any plants. I didn't have anything there. And I wanted something in my house that stimulated life at some point. And so I, I asked her, hey, I'm a single guy. I just moved into a new place. You know, are these easy to kill because I have a black thumb? And I knew the answer. That they were, I mean, they were really hard to kill. And so she started telling me about all of her plants. And then she grabbed me by the hand, dragged me into her house out her back patio into her 0.8 acres of a lot, walked me around telling me about every one of her plants, then reached down, started ripping plants out of the ground, putting them in a plastic bag and said, Here, here's your bachelor starter starter kit. <laughs> <laughs> bachelor starter kit. And so I, I, uh, I, I killed three. I still have one. Uh, yeah. one, one. One's alive. And it was just unique to, to watch the transformation between trying to do a sales thing into just being genuinely interested in about someone else and, and their habits because you're complimenting them about their life choices when you do mm -hmm. that. You know, I, 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 did, I did it with a car years ago. I said, um, gosh, where was it? It was like an X5 or a uh, BMW 7 Series, but it was brand new. And I'm like, dude, tell me about the 7 Series. What do you think? I've been really kind of eyeballing them. He didn't just talk to me about it. She went and got the keys. Then came, opened it up. We inspected everything it could do. Then we and she fired it up and revved it a couple of times. And, oh, and I'm just like, I'm like, oh, 
God, it is so easy to get people to do weird shit. <laughs> <Just by calling. laughs> That's right. But it built a bond. Every time I went yeah. back to her house, I would be like, hey, how's the bends? And how's, how's the beamer treating you? She's like, oh, I love it. I just traded in for a new one or whatever she said, right? But yeah. it, I was memorable, I, and, and I was a welcomed you know, guest to revisit her home. Yeah. So that's a, those yeah. are a couple of tips that you can do that are you know, super simple, super easy, um, and you're not going to be selling anymore. You'll be just having a nice conversation. Yeah, I like it. Very cool. Good. All right. So first of all, I just want to thank everyone that's watching live with us right now on Facebook. We appreciate it. Paul Franklin, as always. Uh, first of all, thanks for the great question. That was a lot of fun uh, to cover that one. Uh, Trey Willard, what is up, man? What um, up, Trey? Antoine dropped in for a bit. Uh, so Antoine. he is awesome. Hanging out with Antoine at the event this weekend. He's running the team. Susan and Tom and uh, everybody that's watching here live, we appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And make sure that you give yourself a shout out in the comments here and let people know where you are so that other people in kind of the community can keep you in mind for referrals and start to build relationships with, with uh, age, like-minded agents, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in the surrounding states. Um, yes, and agree. make sure you put your questions, by the way. So this is open Q&A on this particular episode. We've got some things that we want to talk about, but we are flexible. And so if you come up with a really great question or, a, or just tell us what your biggest challenge is, we will cover it on the show. So, Gregory. Yes, Last you. couple of days, uh, we've been, you know, rubbing elbows with really – awesome, successful, dynamic leaders. Uh, so what were your impressions? Uh, just coming out of the event, um, both from the audience side, speaking, rubbing shoulders in the after party, like what, uh, what impressions are you coming away from the event with? Um, very humbled, you know, very, yeah. very humbled, you know, very honored, very humbled, very uh, excited. And you know, just, you know, on multiple different levels, you know, when you run, when you kick it with, you know, you know, the, you know, Jeff Cohn, Greg Harrelson, you know, Trey Willard, you kick it with these guys that are just movers and shakers and crushers um, that are really getting value. And they're just excited to meet you as you're you know, excited to meet them. And they sit mm -hmm. down and just drop knowledge bombs and just really, there was no pretentiousness. That's the one thing I was, I was, I really liked. No one had a prima donna attitude that I talked to. Everyone was just like, dude, what up, homie? I don't know you, but I'm going to get to know you. Sweet. Fucking A. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And it, it was like when, when he actually met, it was like, it wasn't like a fake thing. It wasn't like a, ah, oh, fuck. Okay. I'll, I'll put a facade on cause I have to, mm -hmm. you know, it was legit. Like, I really am excited to meet you. I want to help you out in any question that was asked. You know, I talked to Lance for a while. He was helping younger guys out and just really doing some cool shit. So that's what I really took away from it is that when you guys are coming up in the ranks or even when you're at the top of the ranks, um, when you're coming up through it, don't be afraid to reach out to someone that you see as an influence or someone that's a leader. Reach out and say, hi, I got a question. Because the true, the true leaders will reach back and give you information and give you, you know, answers to questions that you have. And, you know, when you make it to the top, you know, like a lot of the guys I just mentioned, and, and there's a lot of gals out there that are just crushing it as well. I don't mean to leave the ladies out. My apologies, ladies. Um, but, I mean, when you, when you reach, reach to a certain level of success, like, it's honoring and humbling to be asked questions because sometimes, you know, leaders, you know, guys who are crushing it don't really think of themselves in that position. They have their heads down, you know, looking at the pavement, just grinding and crushing. And then, then when they get recognized as someone that's doing successful things, they're honored to answer the questions because they're mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, like, I'm valuable? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I would totally answer that for you. Mm -hmm. So I saw the, the dichotomy there yeah. of the two different sides. Yeah, I was I was talking to a younger guy, um, uh, one of Josh Cunningham's crew at Rockerbox. So he brought yeah. a bunch of people to the event, and I was talking to one of his guys that's about to graduate. He's actually oh. probably on stage right now collecting his diploma. Dude, I talked to him. Like, I talked to his ass last night. He was hella cool. Yeah, yeah, he's super cool. And uh, so he was picking my brain a little bit, like I would have done in in that situation uh, at his age, and probably should have done more of. And that's exactly what I told him. So we were just uh, chatting about like what he wanted to do and you know, kind of how, how do you figure out what you want to do, exactly what you want to do. He's got a better idea now, but it, it took him a couple of years. It took me over 10. I mean, coming out, well, I would say more than that since I've been working full time since I was 16 years old. Um, so let's say it took me 18 years, 17 years to actually figure out what I, I feel like I wanted to do and where my place actually was and what value I brought. So anyway, mm -hmm. I was just explaining to him that Number one, it, you know, everybody kind of follows a different path and you never know how long it's going to take you. But I will say, I like looking back now, it would have taken me a lot less time if I would have 
narrowed it down to like five or 10 fields or industries that I was curious about, and then just gone and interviewed and shadowed and picked the brains of the people who were at the top. I mm. said, and if I hadn't seen this and heard this multiple, multiple, multiple times from the most successful people I know, I wouldn't know this and I wouldn't have thought it 10 or 15 years ago. I said, but I know for a fact now that the busiest, most successful people, if you reached out to them and said, hey, I'm young, I'm driven, um, but I, I'm looking at my options in terms of like, how do I get to where I want to be and making sure that I'm kind of building out the right business model to start out with, you know, I would love to pick your brain for a few minutes. I know you're super busy. Can I buy you a cup of coffee and bring it mm -hmm. to you at your office mm -hmm. or something like that where I can, we can just, you know, speak for five or 10 minutes in between an appointment. You know, that way we don't take up too much of your time. I'm happy to bring you anything that you want to thank you for your time. I, I there's, there's no team leader I know from the busiest person. And I'm surprisingly, most of them are not probably not as busy as the average agent running around like a chicken mm -hmm. with their head cut off. So that's number one. But number two, even if they are, a lot of them are very busy because they're running multiple businesses. They're not so busy that they would ever turn down that option. It literally would just be, yeah, talk to my secretary, get it set up. Happy to. Yep. That would be the standard yeah. answer. And he was blown away. He's like, I would have never guessed that. And that's, that was like, yeah, I wouldn't have either. So I never asked. If I would have known that, if I would have been around more guys like that 20 years ago, I would have asked and I would have figured out a lot faster where my place was. You know, the funny thing, Matt, is that two things out of that is one, we had Jeff on the show I don't know how a little while ago, and we were talking about that, laughing about it, and we did it on, on air. Or do we do it on air or off air? I think we did it on air about giving away our, our personal cell phone numbers. And any of you who've been watching the show for a long period of time, you know, in the beginning shows, I gave out my number, my cell phone, every show to book a personal free coaching call. You were you'd be surprised and stunned how many how few calls I got on my cell phone. And Jeff said the same yeah. thing. He's like, it's surprising. Yeah. Like people just don't call. They're afraid that they think it's a complete hoax. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. Guys, well, what's funny about that is, you know what you did get? Because you ended up being booked for a year and a half. Right. True. That. You got text messages. True. And emails. I mean, which I, I, the emails probably got lost, but I don't lose text. Mm -hmm. um, right. But the other thing is when you guys decide, like, man, it took him, you know, uh, you know, 16 years or whatnot, you know, to, to fully figure out what he wanted, wanted to do in life. I think another thing when you guys start thinking about what you want to do in life, you, you hold yourself back because you don't think that you're either qualified or entitled to do the, what you truly want. I want you to go and mass murder that idea. I want you to fucking wipe it off the planet, planet, drop fucking nuclear bombs on that idea that you're not good enough or you can't accomplish it. Because if you think it, you can achieve it. End of story. It might not happen tomorrow, but it will definitely happen. But chase your dreams. You, you, I mean, I'm telling you right now, guys, you chase your dreams, and it will never be a single day of work. Don't do what you yeah. think you should do. Do what you want to do, what you love. And that's why Matt and I do this podcast. We love doing these shows. We love interacting with people at different events. It's, it's awesome sauce. It's, yeah. it's where we yeah, want to go. You know, guiding people. Matt, in, Matt, you know, Matt influencing people on systems and guiding them for coaching and getting their heads locked around things, you know, on the back end, you know, uh, uh, to get their real estate going. Me doing the, um, you know, emotional and mental and mindset and prospecting minds, you know, stuff. I will, uh, why do you think I coached for two and a half years for free? Because it wasn't work. I look for, I literally got butt hurt when someone would cancel on me. I'd be like, God <laughs> damn it, now what am I going to do? I was so, I, I looked forward to my calls every night. It was yeah. my playtime because it was a puzzle. It was every single person I talked to was a puzzle. Like, okay, you're fucked up somewhere. Let's take it. Let's tear it apart. Rip that part out. Put you back together, back together, Humpty Dumpty, and get you get, get you back out there. And you know, when people are receptive to that, dude, they would change change their lives. There's there's dozens and dozens of stories coming back from people who took with the information and have become massively successful with it. And it wasn't something that I'll ever ask for anything in return for. It was purely because I loved doing it. And that's where EXP yeah. was born. And how we're, you know, a lot of those people that we've touched their lives then are now coming back and say, dude, I want to join with you guys because you've helped me. You know, we talked yeah. about this, Matt, the other day that when we were on stage, the biggest attractor we were trying to build a team is to give without asking for anything in return and do it on an epic level. And when you think you're out of things to give, give more. People will say, well, you're just being taken advantage of and people are just using you. It's like, no, they're not because you're voluntarily putting that time, energy, and more money out there because you're trying to make someone else's life better. And I didn't, Matt and I didn't go into this coaching, you know, the, 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 the free coaching, you know, on a, you know, two and a half years basis to get something ultimately with EXP. No, 
I just did it to do it to help. So what could you guys do to help? What could you give to another person? You know, just just to do it. Yeah. I mean, Matt, what, what, what would if you if we were to go back two and a half years ago? Um, okay. Serious question, not a fuck around question. Serious okay. question. And let's say you were to do the Johnson challenge. What would have been something that you would have given that you have given away four nights a week for two and a half years and never thought of it as work? Is there anything that kind of jumps out of you? You know, for me, that that was the podcast. Um, outside of that, no. Drum lessons. Not, yeah, no. Nah. No, I have a I have a love hate relationship with giving music lessons, <laughs> in the sense that they love it and I hate it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and by the way, you. we've got Terry Shanahan and Adam Stark are both watching, guys. They were both at the event. We appreciate you guys dropping in and joining us for a few minutes here. Um, what up, guys? But uh, yeah, you know, honestly, there's really not there's not much because um, I you know that that process like coaching, eh, I'm not I'm not crazy. But like the thing that I feel like I can probably give the most value to is help point people if they're if they're motivated if they're driven but they don't know what they don't know mm -hmm. so neely is a great example so we had a great call here i don't know a week or two ago or whatever she's got more buyer clients than she knows what to do with run around like a chicken with her head cut off i mean she's she's in the classic you know unbeknownst to her she's in the same stage that everybody goes through when you take on more clients you're growing, you're overcommitted, you're stretched, you don't have any systems, you have no people to help you, and you're going, how the hell did I get myself into this situation mm -hmm. where I way overcommitted myself and now I have to do all this this crap? Right. Uh, and so what I was able to do in a 15-minute conversation is not, you know, it, I'm not just pouring crap out of my own head. I'm pointing her to the right resources from people who are smarter than me and sending her places to get what she needs to mm -hmm. take the next step, like the exact guidance, the exact systems and steps and stuff like that. So that that is something where, like in 15 minutes, I can deliver a value that is wildly out of proportion to the time that we spend together. Like I'm right. not going to do, uh, and, and um, uh, we, I was joking around with uh, with one of our our kind of <laughs> second tier team members about this the other day because she was asking about calls and stuff like that and she's like well I really like to like to, to chat and you know I, I want to talk about these few things and she's like yeah I'm like well you know let's grab a time on my calendar she's like all right so do I put it down for an hour I'm like <laughs> 15 minutes like we go in 15 minutes you know I, <laughs> because, I, I, yeah, I can barely talk to Matt for an hour and, and, he, and he tolerates it so, that's I mean, right we have our mandatory time of of BS time of 20 minutes at a yes, time yes yeah <laughs> It's, it's like yard time for but it has, it's, it's also the upper limit yeah exactly <laughs> um, but anyway yeah so that like if I was to give something away that that would be the most valuable thing I could give away is 15 minutes where I can point people to the resource that will help them get to the next level and whatever that is for them like I just know mm -hmm. enough people and know enough resources and I know enough about the back end of most people's coaching businesses and products that they've created to know where to send people so yeah, like if I was building a local real estate team and I wanted to give away something helpful to the community to pay it forward, that's what I would do. Um, so I, Matt, I, it wouldn't take an hour and a half of my time a day, thank God, unlike you. <laughs> hey, I enjoy have Dick a Warren. conversation with an agent that runs for less than 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but see, I have so much fun. I mean, they get to go on a walk with me out to the park and we chat for a while. And I, we get to know each other. It's called rapport. Look it up. It's in the dictionary. It's a good thing. Other humans mm -hmm, like it, mm -hmm. Matt. Other humans yeah, like it's, it. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's when you drink port and listen to rap music. I believe in rap port. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> All right. Stupid. Yeah, it is. Uh, that was incredibly stupid. <laughs> I don't know if anybody would get that because you have to know how rapport is spelled. Anyway, point being, uh, let's let's move on to some of the other takeaways from the event. So here's here's the other thing that you and I noticed, Greg, which is the the power of a platform. Mm -hmm. Right. So we we walked into that room and somebody asked from stage, uh, how many of you here? Uh, have listened to the team building podcast with Jeff Cohn. I think 60% of the people raised their hands. Um, somebody asked Jeff how much of the entire coaching consulting business and the workshop events and the people who have shown up to the event, all the stuff that they do at Elite Real Estate Systems is a direct result of his podcast. He said 70%. So, so the, the podcast has become a platform that draws people in, you know, for him. It was the same mm -hmm. way for us, right? So we walk into right. that room, and I would say at least half of the people probably knew who we were, 
uh, just because of the various podcasts and whether it's our own podcast, the guest appearances and stuff like that. The point of me saying that is that we, you can have that same exact phenomenon at your local level. Uh, mm -hmm. Franklin Jones is an amazing example of this. So Columbia, South Carolina, Franklin runs a blog that's well read. It's focused on the community. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, like it's focused on community events, a little bit on the politics, a little bit on the sports. You know, um, it's not super focused on the real estate side of things, or at least not only not only focused on real estate. It's it's community based, and so he gets people engaged and active and commenting and reading and sharing and all this stuff. Um, it's not on video. It's written. Mm -hmm. But he's been doing it for long enough, and it's in a format that people like. It's short, it's punchy, it's well written, right? So he literally can't go to it like he, his lead generation is going to Target, and I'm not saying that's all he does, but he can literally just go <laughs> to Target, and people stop him, and because they know who he is, they read his blog, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's it. it. We can do it with multiple different forms of platforms. Blogging is one, podcasting is another, Facebook Live, Instagram Stories, Instagram Live, all this stuff. These are different forms of platforms. But how amazing is that to have a conversation that doesn't start with who the hell are you? It starts yeah. with, oh, awesome, Greg, right? They already know, like, and trust you. And that's, that's what we kind of experienced with this event um, was just how much the podcast has kind of gone out there ahead of us and built those yeah. relationships with people to where, like, I, I, and I hate to say this, I had people introducing themselves to me that not only did I not know, but I didn't realize that I'd interviewed them before. Uh-oh, Matt, bad, bad Matt. Matt, bad, bad Matt. Matt. But, see, but you know, the, what I'm thing saying. Is the, the thing about it is like, is, is, is this, is we had Sarah Johnston from Calgary, Canada on our show. She's a good friend of the show, a good friend of mine. Um, and she's been doing her, um, what do you call it? Her, uh, her Instagram, she has over 15,000 followers and she gets referrals two to three a week. And, um, Matt, I need to interrupt my, my thought pattern I know. here. And I got it. Un I got unfortunately, it. we forgot the baldy. We forgot Gene. I know. But it is only 11 o'clock East Coast time, so fair enough. We didn't really forget them. We just misplaced them. <laughs> we just misplaced them. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to like that comment at all, though. Um, but anyway, so I mean, what Sarah does, guys, as Matt brings Jean on, is the fact that what she does does a very creative job of engaging people visually because she is a quirky-ass funny chick. And she just brings out her personality and everything that she does, and people gravitate towards it. So, I mean, if, if you're Franklin Jones, if you're Sarah Johnston, if you're, you know, us on the podcast, if you're do Insta, I mean, whatever your flavor is, double down on it and go big on it. But my, the one thing I'm going to tell you right now is I don't try to be something you're not. Try to be honest about who you are, be authentic and attract your tribe. Don't attract the tribe mm -hmm. that someone else has because they're not going to resonate with you. Yeah. Be real with the people. You know, if you're having a shit day, tell me you're having a fucking shitty day. I mean, my mornings with McDaniel, I'm brutally honest about, um, you know, different things, you know, that are going on in my life. And I had, like, this guy, Gus, um, he, he and his wife were doing some lead gen for us. And his wife gets on the phone because she and I had to hash out an issue and you know, we kind of figure out how to handle an issue, I might say. And she, she's like, Greg, you don't know this, but I feel like I already know you. I'm like, what? Like, we've never yeah. talked before, but, you know, I watch what you put out there, and I feel like I actually know what's going on in your life. And I feel like, like, like you're a friend, but I've never talked to you. I'm like, holy shit, are you serious? Yeah. And the power of that, just, in, in guys, you, people won't always tell you that they recognize you, or they know you, or they read your blog, or they watch your videos. But you have a much bigger impact on people than you could ever realize. So you, wielding this informational sword is a large responsibility. I mean, Gene, you know, works with people all over the country about bringing business into their business, you know, and that's a big responsibility. And he, you know, he does a masterful job on it. And so, I mean, well, Gene, actually, now, now that Gene has joined us, I've, I've got a great, a great question. Speaking about being authentic, um, Gene. Well, besides, besides massively apologizing for forgetting to include <laughs> you in the link because we totally were not planning on doing a show today. Um, Gene, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, choosing the right platform uh, for your particular style and being authentic, choosing a platform that allows you to be authentic so you don't have to fake, you don't have to be something mm -hmm. you're not just to get along with that platform. So give, uh, I don't know, give, a, give, you, give your opinion, give your, give your wildly qualified two cents. Wow, that was impressive. Wildly <laughs> qualified? Wildly hey, qualified. Hey, guys, it's Gene. You know it's me, right? 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Um, it's that's actually a good knows. question. So she knows. It's knows. a really good question. I think we start with, like, are we talking about? Are we talking about practice? Are we talking about practice? Are we talking about? Uh, that's a Philly thing, you guys. Are, from okay. a, from a personal oh, perspective, or you want to talk business solely? Oh, we're talking Dude, about business. Everything, man. This is I, the, the, I mean, we're family here. No, that's good, and I think you got to certainly got to infuse your business into your personal, right? But I think there's something else. So if I'm taking this from a business perspective, here's why I ask it. I got to really qualify my eyes first. So who's my client base, and what platform are they using? That's going to be number one, mm, right? Because right. if I'm yeah, if, I, if I'm being authentic on Pinterest, and the people on Pinterest that are watching are not my client base, mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's irrelevant. I just right. really yeah. look for recipes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, first is where are your people? So you wait. So you tell me you have to think about other people. How dare you, Gene? I know, right? Jesus. <laughs> well, well listen, listen, Matt, the, the real answer is to be on all of them. Let's be authentic yeah. on all of them. You know that, that yeah. obviously because that's the more exposure you're going to get. But if you're picking one, I would first dive in a little bit and figure out behind the scenes what kind of people are watching. Is it 18 to 35 year old? Uh, jet, seventy percent male, and is that what meets my target audience? So those are the people who are going to resonate with my authentic self. And if the answer is yes, then that's where I'm going to go. And I think you, in this day and age, you need to adapt to the platform that you're on once you're there. So you can have your true authentic self in Instagram stories, or you can have your true authentic self on SoundCloud while you're doing a podcast, or your true authentic self. Um, on Snapchat, if that's your if that's your move. So, for the first trick is to be authentic. Second is to make sure you're promoting content. You're put you're pushing content. Third is to make sure that the eyeballs meet your requirements. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Very very simple and effective breakdown. Gregory, you're muted. I'm surprised. Uh, I figured well, you would jump all over. That. Well, I have a lady yelling at us on what gate to go to, so I'm, I was trying to be courteous oh. to your to your ear walls. Okay. <laughs> Thank um, you. I appreciate. It. <laughs> No, I, I think that's true. I mean, I found me for writing. Mm -mm, that ain't happening. So a blog in my future is not going to happen. That's not my medium. It, it's 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 like chewing glass is you know is how much I enjoy writing. Um, so doing video and talking and going out and doing public stuff. That's that's my platform. And people realize to say that you know they know that I'm you know going to say fuck every once in a while. It's just how I roll. And p people will, you know have adapted to it if they don't like it and they accept it or they have just said, okay, this isn't the guy for me. And that's fine because they're not mm -hmm. my tribe. And I like what Gene said. And like you said, Matt, it's a very, very simple, very easy. God, there's a baby. Uh-oh, where is it? I heard it. You hear it? If you hear it again, tell me if it's behind me. Is it back there? <gasps> Think it's back. It's look, is it looking at me? Is it looking at me? <laughs> the, I have oh a God. manual. One, have one, a of manual. The one of the best parts of Ready Player One, and I hopefully I don't spoil this for anybody who hasn't seen it, is when an, a real animated Chucky doll like gets used as a weapon in the game, and they just throw it into some guy's car, and then Chucky's like going nuts and like like stabbing at them <laughs> in the car. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the picture when you're like, is that baby behind me? Like it's like a little Chucky doll behind like stalking you. Dude, seriously, like, give a give a brother heads up, bro. This isn't funny. Don't fuck around. With <laughs> you said I don't have the manual. <laughs> we'll do that. Well, I, oh, I have a manual, and it says when baby looks at you, don't make eye contact, make like a lamb, curl up in a ball, and just don't move. It will not approach. <laughs> <laughs> don't make eye contact. They Ladies, smell, he's available. No fear. Wait, I think that's I think that's dingoes. And capybara? No, wait, is it is it a baby or a capybara? Okay, um, <laughs> don't make eye contact. Make sure to play dead. Uh, do yes. not do not run. Do not run. They will chase you. They will do chase you run. with That's wet right. binkies. With wet yeah, binkies. Exactly. All right. So here here's a good question. Uh, we've been talking about uh, platforms and stuff like that. So let's move on and get into more of the sales side and objection handlers. So this is from uh, Kaylee. Uh, what can a new agent say to a potential seller when they ask if you've sold in the area? or what you've sold recently. Um, now this is obviously, this comes up for both new agents, but it doesn't really matter how experienced you are. This comes up uh, with a certain type of seller regardless, unless you unless your signs are freaking all over the place, you can get this question. So really this applies to just about anybody, but let's take, let's take the first part of it. What do you say if you're a new agent and you can't say, well, I sell over here all the time, I'm just new to this area. Like what, how do you handle that objection? 
Uh, well, some, there are two ways. Uh, one way you could dodge the question and ask your own question, then answer your own question. So if they say okay. something like, so, "Ooh, well, do you like butterscotch or vanilla?" You know, I like butterscotch. Ooh, let me tell you about the let questions. me tell you about the frozen yogurt that I like. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something but if, like they, that. if they were going to be like, you know, well, how, how many homes have you sold here in the area? I'd be like, you know what? That's a good question. You know, the, a lot of the homes that the typical type of home that I sell is going are single family homes, very much similar to yours. Um, and that's why I think I'm well qualified to sell your property. So you just okay. bobbed right around there, ask yourself a question, answered your, your your own question, and kept on trucking like you just did did them a service. Yeah. Um, second off, what I would do is I would say, well, is it more important that I list your home? Because I'm in I'm in the business of selling homes. Are other people saying they're just going to list your home? <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is that is an artful dodge. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's, you gotta walk that line. I'm like, oh, they're selling. They're saying they'll list your home. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna do more than put a sign in the ground. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I'm in the business okay. of selling homes. I, I don't know what they told you, but I, yeah, I'm in the business of selling homes. So that's hilarious. next question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, that those are the two different ways I would do it. Or you just, I mean, the, the old traditional way of doing this is you straight up just lean on your brokerage. Like, hey, I'm with okay. blah 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 Yakety Schmack Brokerage, and we mm -hmm. sell on average you know, seven homes a week, one home a day. So we are we are incredibly, you know, valuable and well-versed in selling homes in all marketplaces, especially yours. Um, so get your mm -hmm. stats before you go and go out and do that. But I mean, they just want to see numbers and it's all about smoke and mirrors. If you ever, you know, have you ever seen the movie, movie um, not Catch Me If You Can, but Here I Am, I know it's a magic movie. I, I watched it the other day at my house. I just bought it. It was really good. It's all about, you know, sleight of hand and sleight of word and, you're looking over here, but you're really over here. Something's happening, just like typical magic tricks. See if you can do mm -hmm. that verbally when you're when you're dancing around questions you don't have answers to, and play with these answers. Go get the most common objections, and then have your friends throw them at you randomly, like live fire, to see what you know what 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 you know what how you could answer to it, and play like the the slug bug game. If you don't get it right, or if they don't buy it, they slug you in the shoulder. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me give you the another perspective on that, and then I want Gene to pipe in because I, I have I have two quick ideas for how to prevent that objection from ever coming up to begin with, which is what I want to focus on. Uh, which is number one, if you're truly a new agent, if you're not joining a team, which is kind of my standard recommendation, because that will also prevent that question from ever coming up. If you're going to stay independent, partner with somebody, partner with it. Like if you've only worked with buyers and this is literally your first listing, first of all, you need help you are not necessarily the best person to advise them on the sale of their home if you've never done it before. So go get help. Go find a mentor agent, tell them you'll split the commission with them, negotiate the split, bring them to the listing appointment problem solved. So that's number one. Uh, number two is to do, Greg, your strategy with, uh, with Facebook in terms of finding the demographics of the ideal buyer. That, I think, will go a long way towards preventing a question like that from happening. Because if you go in there and say something to the effect of, you know, in this neighborhood, here's what the demographics of, of, of the neighborhood are. Here's how we're going to find them and target them on, on Facebook. When we do your open house, we're going to do a live video streaming from your open house. Then we're going to boost that. Like if, you, like if you go through just like five or six bullet points and you pull out all the stuff and you can demonstrate. We've had a guest on the show that kind of pulled back the curtain a little bit uh, on his approach. Uh, he's in his early, 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 early 20s and is a Whoa. very successful listing agent in Texas. And uh, I believe his name is, oh, yeah. is it Adam Olson. I think that's the name. So, guys, go back and listen to the Adam Olson episode. That was phenomenal. Um, yeah. that is the, so those are two ways uh, that, that I know are proven to obliterate that objection before it comes up. Gene, let's turn to you. How would you obliterate that objection either before it comes up and destroy it before it's ever asked or af after it's asked, how would you destroy it? So I, I'm thinking about this from two perspectives. One would be just to shoot straight, right? I mean, a lot of a lot of this is going to end up being whether they like you and and your ability and your hustle, and sometimes that dwarfs the your expertise in a specific geography, right? So maybe maybe there's and I know this is going to make people cringe, but I operate out of out of transparency in a lot of cases, and my thing might be this: Look, I'm new to the area, you know, but nobody's going to work harder. And, and nobody's going to X and nobody's going to Y and nobody's going to Z. The re reality of it is, is I'm new, but everybody gets to start somewhere, right? And so I mm -hmm. think, and, and Matt, you said a good thing. If you prepare yourself with data and analytics and demographics from that area, that certainly sets you up for success to head out. The second piece of it would be if you build yourself enough of a following or a plan 
where you can get as many eyeballs on that property when you list it as possible. So, for example, Facebook advertising, if you do a little research on that and say, we have a new listing, I'm going to break it up into five different marketing elements and assets, and then I'm going to spend X amount of dollars on each, and I know I can reach 55,000 people in this vicinity to see your home, maybe that overrides, you know, it's, it's an eyeballs game at that point. So regardless of the fact of whether I've, I've ever worked in your backyard or not, let's talk about the, the, the perspective of me being able to get 100,000 people to look at your property in the next mm -hmm. 30 days that are yeah. potential buyers. Is that something that would interest I, you above and beyond my expertise or not? Well, that's, that, I think that's the actual, uh, Gene, I think you just solved the problem. It's not a question of your ability to sell the home. It's do you, do you know how to get people into my house in a short period of time so I don't have to keep it clean for a month or two months? You know, how many eyes can you put on it? Because the sellers a lot of times want the, the Zillow, the Trulia, the Realtor.com, you know, numbers. Like how many people have seen my home? 10,000, 20,000, 16,000, 70,000. And, you know, that's what they want to see. So I think that, I think what you just did was great. I think it, I mean that can we could I mean I could come up with silly goofy you know or you know funny things to say to people, but realistically it's, it's can you get eyeballs and attract the right buyer to my home? I don't care if you're a purple Smurf. Can you get a human to buy my house? Yes, I can. And here's my plan. Here are my numbers. Here are my stats. So if you can go in it with the stats that Matt talked about, then bring the stats that you just talked about. With you, you know, knowing exactly what your attack plan is, it's like a general in a war. They didn't go into war not having a game plan, but so many agents go into a listing appointment not knowing what the fuck they're gonna do. They, they're gonna bumble fuck around, slam into a couple walls, twist their ankle, and then walk out wondering why they didn't get the listing. Hmm. So, and you know what else too? You know what else too? I think this is an important element. You don't have to know everything, right? Yeah. So, right. like when I talk to my agents in my area, like some of my clients. If you and I'll ask you guys as agents, if you walked into a into a house and the and the person said, "You're going to take pictures of my house," you're going to say, "Of course," uh, you know, and they're going to say, "What aperture and 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 uh, uh, f-stop are you going to use on that camera when you do it?" You're going to go, mm -hmm. "I have no idea." That's what the photographer does, right? So <laughs> I can find out for you, right? Yeah. No, no, listen, yeah. I hire these people to put this stuff in place to get the best results. You don't want me taking your pictures. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, that's, that's really what you're going to do. My job yeah. here as the agent is to kiss the babies. I don't know the answer right now to what the F stop and the aperture is going to be. But if it's that important to you, let me just make a phone call. I don't I don't think it's if you're comfortable in the not knowing it makes your it, it doesn't rattle your confidence. So think about what happens to you yes. as a person when you can't answer and you think you need to. You go, oh, right. And that makes you yep. look unprofessional, <laughs> makes you look unsure of yourself. Whereas versus if I just said to you, look. My job is to kiss that baby and make you feel comfortable with negotiations. My face goes on the sign. I don't do anything else. <laughs> These guys do it. I get my marketing experts to get the numbers. I get my videographer to do this. I have a drone guy. Because, listen, if you want me to fly a drone around your house, you're going to have many broken windows. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? But if, if, you, if you find out that if you feel comfortable and you're not knowing, I think that becomes a powerful tool for you. Yeah. 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 Vulnerability is, is, is the word that you want to t focus on. Be, be able be be comfortable being vulnerable because vul being vulnerable is showing strength and transparency. You when, know, when you have a strength to show. When you that's what I'm saying. Like don't don't you know sit there with your wang out. Yeah, you, know, you, like, got, hey, you gotta be confident in, you gotta be confident in the skill set that you do have. The yeah. the sales skill set. You have to be confident in the fact that look, I pulled together the best team. I pulled together the right strategy. The best players are in the position to play their best ball. Right? I'm mm -hmm. the coach. I have specific players. And they're specialists at what they do, but my role is to coach and make sure that we get the ball to the to the to the goal line. That's I'm my the quarterback, role. right? I'm the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. and that's a great analogy. You can make that analogy anywhere in Nebraska, from the top of the best condo to the inside of the most rural farmhouse, and everybody no, that, will go great. You say, so wait, I am Scott. You say, I am Scott Frost. So wait, the oh quarterback. So the quarterback, that's the that's the one that plays golf, right? <laughs> oh, exactly. you guys are brutal. The two exactly. of them. He went Scott Frost, the other one went. Greg. I don't know about I think Greg game. accidentally that we got the biggest kick out of it because we we're doing a lunch and learn the other day. Um, we were talking about uh, our, our team and, and kind of sharing the benefits and stuff like that. And Greg dropped I don't even remember what it was, but Greg, you about made me fall off my chair because you <laughs> semi correctly used a sports analogy. I know, it was awesome. You know, I, we're and talking I do, about and I do say semi-correct. 
Because I don't think you knew, intentional, I don't think you knew that it was correctly used. You took a wild (laughs) stab and you accidentally hit on the right combination of two things. Like, hey, like the quarterback throws the ball and gets a touchdown. Like it could have easily been the, he throws the, he throws the wicket and scores a try. Like you get, like you never know what's going to pop out of your mouth. You know, the funny thing is I'm actually really good at playing sports and actually do know sports, but I hate watching them with such a passion. That's why we do this all the time. <laughs> it makes me look like a sports retard. You're an alien, dude. How does it, how do you even make a statement like that? It's like saying I don't like pizza. Well, it's because I was never able to. I never like my, the reason I hate football is because my mom. I I don't have a passion for it because I never played it. I never. I know positive association to, towards it. Like most of the people have a positive association towards it. My grandfather made me watch it all the time, and he was kind of a dick to me. So no, I don't really like football. <laughs> End of story. Can't be friends anymore. I'm out. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, shut up! You All right. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's let's deal with one um, one last specific question before we start winding down. Before that, Gene, tell people how and why they should connect with you. I have no idea why. Um, they can reach out to me <laughs> for barber at advice. dot com. Right? Oh come uh, on! You got to do better than that, bro. I'm tired Check that out. You guys, you guys got to. Either you're that doing it or. Girl. Gene Holby? Um, <laughs> why? Why would you call me? If you need help in strategizing your next listing appointment, you need social media management, you need website design, you need help, you need some insight. I've been helping people a little bit off the cuff with um, just setting up Facebook advertising campaigns for themselves. We're working through some video chats. It's been a little bit of fun. Um, so, listen, if you need some help online digitally, I can certainly help you with that, I think. And so, GeneVolpe.com. And, and, you know, Gene has got a very nice back end. That's what, just no, kidding. I'm, I'm, just I'm kidding. not even touching that. No, <laughs> All right. All right. No, but, no, but seriously, um, Gene, his back end of his system is really, really cool. Um, it's, it's really awesome for pulling stuff to post socially, being able to read stuff that's out there, floating around the ether. But I'm like you know, the J-Lo of social media. Dude, big old ass, brother. Big old ass of goodness. <laughs> speaking of speaking of a uh, a truckload of goodness, Greg, how do people reach out and learn more about uh, all the all the truckload of value uh, that we provide as part of our team when they join up with us? <laughs> Guys, go to bookmcdaniel.com again. Go to bookmcdaniel.com. Do it right after this podcast. Not now. Don't you dare walk away from this knowledge bomb. Matt's gonna drop, and Gene's gonna drop, and I'm just gonna fade off into the sunset, like the miserable sap that I am. But. No, we we are going to uh, guys join our EXP team. Seriously, if you guys have been thinking about joining EXP, if you want to change your brokerage, if you want to make more money, the green shit with the old dead white guys on it, uh, if you want to make more of that, come talk to me at bookmcdaniel.com. You guys, we'll figure out how we're going to show you the JLo booty of goodness that we have outside of what. Um, or actually, it's not JLo. You got me on the wrong one, Gene. It's the Kim Kardashian ass of goodness. Of, of you know, products and coaching and mentorship and uh, masterminds and just all kinds of other stuff. Well, we're, we're looking at we're looking into stepping up our game, right? So we went from a J Lo's worth of value. Now we're yes. at a Kardashian's worth of value. We're looking into <laughs> now this is risky. We're looking into stepping it up to a Nicki Minaj worth of value. Snap. Yeah, it's I know. Now, I know. It's, I'm, it's risky. I'm going to sign, sign up with myself now. <laughs> I feel I, like I'm you're sure. doing that in the wrong order. <laughs> you think so? All right. Anyway, um, J Lo's the pinnacle of that. What are you talking about? All right. Um, we're talking about size, sheer mass and size, but that, that's another conversation. We'll get into that another time. All right. This is a, a final question. Uh, this is from Judy Gray, and basically, uh, when she first ran the CMA, it looked like it came out at 300. So they, uh, or excuse me, it looked like it came out around 350. So they listed for 350. Turns out, the you know, after redoing the CMA, taking a second look at the comps, it's actually more like 300. So how do you handle something like that where you have essentially kind of, you know, looked at the wrong comps, maybe you left out one comp, something like that? How do you go back to your clients and really say, like, look, this is what the market's saying, and when you really run the numbers again, it bears out what the buyers are telling us, we're overpriced? Well, one, sorry, Judy, but fuck, chick. You look at your damn numbers. This is your job. I mean, run the comps. And I think that sometimes people put a comp in or leave a comp out to either buy the listing or justify what they already told somebody. But you've mm-hmm. got to be able to say, look, this is these are the numbers. I misread the data. That's my fault. I own it. My deepest apologies. But our real listing is at around 300000 Now, I am apologizing to you as a, as a woman of my honor. 
and I know I can sell the home. You know, I was running too quickly, uh, but I would like to re I would like to do a price adjustment and I'd like to get it back out on the market and get you guys get you folks on to the next stage of life. What, what do you say? Mm -hmm. So that's how I would handle it, you know, straight up. Or if you yeah. wanted to say, hey, look, the, you know, you know, after re-looking at the numbers, we're off by about 50,000. I know it's substantial. I know it's a little hard to hit, but mm -hmm. that's, what the, that's what the market is telling us. Yeah. That's what, that's yeah, what that's a, it's a tough situation to deal with. I like both of those, uh, you know, the phrasing and the objection handling. Gene, anything else you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I would build a $60,000 shed. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say. Um, <laughs> that might be the greatest one-liner gene that you've ever delivered. So the sixty thousand dollars shed. So here's my thing. I, I, I well, first off, I'm going to go easier on Judy than than Greg did, right? Um, <laughs> you're assuming she made a mistake. Maybe maybe in the in the past two weeks something sold at that rate. You know, after after we ran the first right. sale, maybe something sold. Um, right. If it is if it is your mistake, if it's my mistake, you almost got to go in there, sort of like you did. I. I, I may have missed this. You know, we got to reevaluate, and I think you almost need to live to give them a way out. Like if you're if you're under a listing agreement, and I think you come up front with it and say, "Look, I made a terrible mistake. This is going to be fifty thousand dollars in the backside p potentially because of the mistake that I made when we first signed this listing agreement." And so because of that, I'd still love to list your home. I, obviously, I'm not going to hold you to a three month contract because I made that mistake. I'd still love to do it. Here's what I would do to fix it. Um, but you know, if you if you feel like this is a a, a deal breaker, you certainly you know I, you're you're ob I'm not obligated to keep the contract with you. I don't know how you feel about that, but I almost got to give you a way out. Well, you can also yeah. uh, put add something into the pot. So in our area, it's very typical for the sellers to pay for the buyer's one year home warranty, and it's only a couple of hundred bucks, but it's an act a gesture. Say, hey, look, for my me screwing up so badly, I would happily pay for that one year home warranty that uh, is typically your responsibility. I will absolutely take care of that for you if you'd allow me to. And, yeah, you know, like that. it's a very simple, small gesture, but it goes miles because it's you taking money out of your pocket. And you're not still just asking nothing from you, in, you know, but you have to take 50,000 from them. Put a little skin in the game, you know, maybe, maybe pay for some of their moving, you know, moving costs. You know, say, hey, look, I'll pay for the, the, the you know, for the one year home warranty and I'll put a thousand dollars towards your moving costs, you know, just because I screwed up. Yeah. Just something, just be, be creative. I mean, what would you want out of this? I mean, would it doesn't you, have to be a huge thing. Would you concede some of your commission on the back? Dude, I've done it before. I mean, I, I put a thousand dollars in on one of my last deals just to, we were, we were four thousand dollars apart between seller and buyer. I was double ending it. And the seller was locked down. She wasn't going to do any more than this amount of money. The buyer was pretty much like, fuck this bitch. You know, I mean, she wouldn't give me what I needed. And, I'm saying, and I just looked at him like, dude, I'll put a grand in out of my own money. He's like, you would? I'm like, yeah, man, 100%. He's like, I'm going to take you up on that. And if you, if you do that, we have a deal. I'm like, done. The paperwork's coming over. That's easy. That's, that's, that's great. Thousand, zero percent commission or $1,000 less than what you, got, you were getting? Exactly. That's exactly. And he had a happy client. That his job, he said, Greg, my job is to refer you, you know, several people as fast as possible because I loved how you guys handled me. And that was a nightmare, mm -hmm. and I know it, but, I, you know, you guys, you were professionals yeah. all the way through. So thank you. Now, and that actually, that's a good script. Like, let's take a, take a potential mistake out of the equation. Let's say it's just a situation where you're kind of negotiating and things like that, and, and somebody is asking you to take a hit. Not not on your commission percentage because that, that's a that's a big chunk to give up. I think it's much better to deal with absolute numbers, five hundred, a mm -hmm. thousand, or I will pay for X, um, mm -hmm. you know, rather than a percentage because because a percentage doesn't sound that big, but it can really add up quickly versus you know actually paying for something concrete. Um, but when you're in that situation and people ask you to do that, uh, I learned this from from Frank at Viral Marketing because people will uh, attempt to negotiate their fees and their fees are set because that's how much it costs to deliver things. Um, and so in the early days, he said, look, when somebody asked if they could, you know, reduce like the upfront fee that it takes to like build out their stuff, um, he said, I would say uh, absolutely on, on one condition. Uh, I ask you that you give me the names and, and introductions to three people right now that you think would be a great fit, who you can introduce me to, a, like a personal, legit introduction to three people that you think are really great clients that might be interested in working with me. 
And if you do that, we can look at reducing, you know, this part of, uh, of the fee that we're talking about. So yeah, I do, I do like that, Greg, you mentioned, like if you're, if, you know, separate out the mistake, if it's just like they're asking you to chip something in, you can always say yeah, conditionally, yes, yeah, so I'm happy to, but the lifeblood of my business is referrals. So if you're willing to help me out in that regard, then I'm happy to pitch in part of my commission to contribute to X. Mm -hmm. You can also do that on the front end as well. Uh, we call it, how, Terry calls mm -hmm. them housing, housing bucks. So okay. um, what you do is you say, hey, look, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, we have something called housing bucks. And you know what it is is that uh, if you need a little bit of touch-up paint or a little bit of work done around the house or maybe sprucing up the yard to your to your specifications, we'd be happy to put in up to a blank amount of money. We say we'll put up a, we'll put up it to about five grand, you know, housing bucks that you know we'd be happy to put up front for you. But here's mm -hmm. the condition: we get that money back in escrow, and if we don't end up selling it when the home sells, we have we we get our five thousand dollars or whatever the amount is. We don't go negative on that. We get it back, yeah. but maybe people just don't have the money, but they have the equity. You know, there's a lot of different scenarios in there that you can use that on, but that's just another creative way to, to either get the listing or keep the deal together. Yep, I agree. And um, I mean, Gene, on the investment side, I mean, you've been, you've been in some negotiations, I'm sure, where something like that, some gesture, you know, sometimes all it takes is one small gesture to, to get the deal, and that's the difference between the deal going through or not. Yeah, and if we we can tie this with a nice little bow, we go back to what we talked about in the first question, which is that authenticity. If you if you try to tap dance around it and make excuses, people look mm -hmm. disfavorably on that. If you're honest and it's, things typically go better when you're when you're straightforward and you have that conversation and you offer something of value and you go, look, my bad, I screwed this up. I mean, you know, you know how much better that mm -hmm. feels than no, it wasn't my fault. We talked about this. The guy down the street did this. Two people down, the cat had a, had, you know, threw up a hairball. Like nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Especially Matt and cats. Uh, yes. But he, he, actually, I think you're allergic to cats. But we were laughing with uh, with Missy, you know, Jeff's right hand girl, and we were laughing that uh, I'm I I have the cats and Matt. I think you were going to be the bird boy. Wasn't that, were you going to be the bird boy? Yeah, bird boy and cat man, I think, was yeah. somehow ended up being her nickname or something. These are our superhero names. Wait, <laughs> yeah, who's doing the caricatures of me as the, as the evil, the, the, uh, the so bomber? Now you're, who is the, so now you're, on, now you are uh, our, our evil enemy because you're the evil ball genius and I am the cat man with my trusty sidekick, the bird boy. I, listen, <laughs> I love this. And if, I forget who that was, Matt. Do you remember what, what that guy was doing the caricatures? Uh, when he, the guy who's doing we the character. with the turban on, remember? We were doing the, the, um. Oh, no, I don't remember who did that. If you're, if you're listening to this, speak, speak now or forever hold your peace. I, might, I feel like it was someone like Paul Franklin that grabbed, that grabbed the screenshot. I don't know that it was Paul, but it was someone that was, that was watching quite a bit here, uh, and grabbed that and, and photoshopped it up and, and posted it as a comment. That was great. Yeah, because I see an R, <laughs> listen, I see an R, R, E, U live comic strip in our near future. Oh my God! <laughs> well, we, dude, we were talking Bird about Antoine boy, last Bird night. Cat man. <laughs> yes, yes, I love this. Now we have our oh. own superhero T-shirts. This is as amazing. long as I get to be the primary bad guy. Yes, your primary That's right. bad guy. Okay. Okay. So you're you're going to have to find no another analysis. animal to put on your lap and pet while you make your evil plans, because obviously Greg's got a, a a lock on the cats. So mm -hmm. I I nominate you to hold the capybara. I, listen, I, I'm going to take it a step further. You want me to blow your mind? Uh, it's yeah. uh, the greatest Chihuahua. Australian rodent. Ha, no, no, no. Have you, ever seen the, have you ever seen the video with the guy petting his dog, the little chihuahua? Because no. it's, it's to, to own a dog and pet the dog is de-stressful, and the dog's attacking him the whole time? Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes, so yes, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it with a real estate raccoon. It'll be my raccoon. Yeah, I got some ideas, boys. This is going to be fun. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So with that being said, everybody, go to bookmcdaniel.com and learn about all the value that we are giving you for joining and connecting up with us and our team. Yes. That is McDaniel Real Estate Systems. Uh, so among the many things that you get, uh, you get uh, weekly training from us, direct video on every Monday morning. Uh, we do a live conference call with Greg on sales and prospecting. You can jump on and ask any question you want. It's completely open forum training. Uh, if you need additional access, 
uh, both he and I are available as much as we possibly can. Uh, and then specifically for marketing building, you know, team building and systems questions, you can grab a time with me on my calendar in 15 minute chunks as much, you know, as I have available. Obviously it's limited, uh, but that's available to any of our team members at any time. Uh, on top of that, you also get ERS live stream, which mm. to the general public is 17 bucks a month. So if you're a team leader, an agent, you want to plug into some of the top training from Jeff Cohn's top team, like number two or three Berkshire Hathaway worldwide. Are you kidding me? Uh, broadcast from his 50,000 square foot office in beautiful and scenic Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, <laughs> you can grab that at EliteRealEstateSystems.com under the live stream tab. Uh, those of us that uh, that are part of our tribe here at McDaniel uh, Real Estate Systems gets that included for free. So either way, there's a way to plug into that. Uh, and then we also recommend WiseHire, which is doing an awesome job. They have a this awesome. great system where you can, if you're building a team, you can advertise for the specific role. They'll put it on all the job boards. They'll screen them out by disk profile. They'll match you up uh, with the ones who pass that disk profile and, and come out as being a very good fit for exactly the role that you're looking for. So we're working with them right now to uh, to run ads in Greg's area. And they're filtering out all the people that we don't want to talk to that are a total waste of time for Greg to talk to. So uh, if you would like to do that for your team, check out WiseHire. Uh, I think that's about all the things we need to cover, boys. What do you say? Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. You know, I'm glad we got the vul the Vulpinator in on this. That's what you're going to be called. Mm -hmm. You're now the evil bald ninja, the Vulpinator. Oh yes, the Vulpinator. That works. It sounds yeah. It sounds like you should have a gun that freezes things or sprays things or something. Ooh, yes. Or shoot baby mm -hmm. raccoons. That's what it is. He has a baby raccoon gun. It's, it's a raccoon launcher. <laughs> Please tell me the Vulpinator comes standard equipped. The action figure comes equipped with a raccoon. Well, it does now. <laughs> it did I love a minute it. ago, but it does now. <laughs> all right. Well, in honor of Gene, uh, that's right. Well, in honor of Gene, uh, the late joinee for today because of me, uh, let's put an orange bow tie upon this episode. And I, I'm namaste. Um, namaste. <laughs> that's right. I don't know about you, but now I'm gonna stay here any longer than I have to. <laughs> okay, the one-liners are just abounding with us. All right, guys, hey, we love we love you guys. It's such an honor to meet you guys face to face when we do get to meet you, and awesome to get a hold of you guys and talk with you and reconnect with you and everything else. So again, if you guys are thinking about EXP, go to bookmcdaniel.com. Do it right now. Don't be a putz. You know, if we brought value to you, we want you on our team. I am not fucking around. Um, Gene is a legend, even though he doesn't say it, please go hire him. He does a really good job. His wife will thank you and his kids will not, not be shoeless any longer. Um, Johnson, you know what, what I'm going to say right now? I do. Peace out, ninjas. <laughs>